Portland. I'm riding around here with Jonathan Moss, the official everything of Bike Portland all these years. So I came out here to see just what's going on with bicycling in Portland. But the thing I was most interested in, and Jonathan took me to a couple sites, is about treatments for intersections, intersections and for yeah. safety yep. to get people from one place to another. I mean, we've been building safe bike streets as long as any city in America. And we've got now, like with the Blumenauer Bridge, we have some really nice pieces, right? So the idea that you can have all that stuff great, but if those intersections aren't, they don't feel good, if those are unsafe, it really devalues everything else on either side of it, right? And I think yeah. the city is kind of figuring that out, right? Slowly but surely, getting those intersections tight and then just continuing to fill in those gaps. We're on the Earl Blumenauer Bicycle and Pedestrian Bridge right over I-84, just a stone's throw from the central city. As you can see, tons of thousands and thousands of people driving cars underneath us. A great alternative, the two bad connections on either side. So this has just been like a really important connection. And we were talking earlier, but there's some really good signalization to get people through uh, on each side. One of the big bright spots in the last few years is getting this bridge finally uh, across the highway. One of the things the city of Portland actually does really well, I think, is the signalized intersections. We have a lot of bike sensing signals all through town. This one here at the Blumenauer is especially good. Uh, you can pretty much keep your riding going as you are on the bike path here. And as you turn to face the signal, I've had it trip as I get up there, but it's really just a very short wait and you can continue on past the bridge. So that's great because when people have to wait at a signal, they're more likely to run a red or do something indecisive, do something that's gonna be a little more dangerous. So kudos to the city of Portland for really getting this right. We have probably, I would say, a dozen signals in the city. So there's actually like a blue uh, indicator as you come up. And what that does, it says, hey, if I'm the signal, it says, hey, I see you, you're on a bike, you know, don't get impatient. The neat connection too with uh, Congressman Blumenauer is he was also commissioner of transportation right here in the city of Portland before he was a member of Congress. So a person that started the Bicycle Caucus in Washington, D.C. So he's been somebody that has, you know, pushed for progressive transportation projects and bicycling uh, for a long time. So going in Greeley, there's actually beyond the intersection part with the really nice signal, the, to, the, to the north of it, you go right by the Adidas campus. So that's the Adidas headquarters of North America. They actually paid, I think like a million bucks to make that happen. That's why it's got the really interesting green stuff on the ground there. It's like this tennis ball optical illusion thing. But then south, you've got the Jersey barrier. So it's one of the only places that has a Jersey barrier protected bike lane. And they had to do that because you've got a lot of big truck traffic and really high speed, like a high volume traffic on Greeley. You've got the I-5 on ramp as well so that had to be really well protected uh, and then yeah north going up with the two-way it's kind of like a double wide bike lane going up by adidas it was really important in the going and Greeley intersection to get that signal right so now we've got this like bike scramble signal so it's bike only but you got, have to go diagonally so as you're rolling down it sees you very well you know beforehand and it usually changes by the time you get to stop and you're able just to kind of roll through and get right on the bike lane so it's a ground sensored signal and it's also got an indicator light to let, let folks know you're there i believe i think it's got one of the indicators yeah. but and even coming the other way as well so it's north and south and yeah especially coming south since you have downhill speed if they didn't have that set right it could be really really dangerous because like i said you have to cross probably four or five lanes of other traffic so yeah.
south of the Blue and Our Bridge, Southeast Seventh and Salmon, uh, there's just the plastic curves, bright, bright yellow or orange plastic curves with a bunch of the candlestick wands, and they've basically made like a diverter on the cheap, right? So it's a full diverter in the middle of the road, but there's spaces so that bike riders can go through. It also limits the left turns that drivers can do, right? So it really reduces a lot of the conflict, and I think it's a great example of how innovative Portland has been. This intersection actually illustrates a lot of things the city of Portland is trying to do. First of all, they want to capitalize on that big investment of the Blumenauer Bridge, and it's all about connectivity. This north-south street is also part of what they call a neighborhood greenway route, so they want to make this a big bike connection. And then the east-west right here, which you can see comes in in an offset, this east-west is one of the oldest neighborhood greenways, which are kind of our bicycle boulevards, right? Oldest neighborhood greenways in the city. So you have this offset intersection, Blumenauer neighborhood greenway, and they had to do something to make this safer. And before they, they changed it, all it was was in the middle of that intersection was a really big tree that, it, and this has been this has been there for decades, there was a big tree and in a planter, right? So a little roundabout actually. Uh, and so you think roundabout, that's great traffic calming, we love those. But according to the city of Portland, it actually created some visibility problems, it created some weird angles, and they actually thought it was less safe. And they also had problems with speeding on each end of it. So they ended up having a plan that took out the roundabout. And so the neighbors were not having it. The neighbors were like, absolutely not. Why would you take a tree inside of a roundabout out of our neighborhood? We don't think it's gonna work. We think people are gonna speed. So this is what they ended up with. As you can see, they're trying to, they added some painted crosswalks. Uh, they tried to get some of the bike traffic off of the street and then to make it a little bit of a better angle as you, as you sort of, a little mini protected intersection essentially. And they have a, a bike, what they call a cross bike up, on, up in the intersection now. And on each end, they've added speed bumps to reduce the speed coming into this intersection. They've added some sharrows as well. Uh, and then the, the other thing too is that, that big, I guess they call it like a diverter. It's a semi-diverter in the middle of the street up there to really just deflect speed and let folks know that this is a sort of a cautionary intersection. So yeah, from, from plastic wands, you know, down down there a few blocks to then really high tech signals that sense if you're there and change right away with your bike only signal to stuff like this where it's like a left turn box and a little protected intersection. So it's just the real gamut of different intersection types. And you know, it shows that they're very innovative and flexible. Some people don't like it because they think it's inconsistent, but uh, you know, I think it's just the city saying here, this is what we have to work with. And depending on what budget we have attached to a certain project, we're gonna be able to do this or that. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what they're doing.